One of the most common problems for creators on TikTok and Instagram Reels or any short form video is that you upload a video and then it still looks low quality and pixelated. In this video, we're gonna start this journey off with some exported video footage from uh, Premiere Pro that I shot with my Canon 1DX Mark II and some uh, iPhone footage or whatever phone footage, it's gonna work exactly the same. Then we're gonna use Video Enhanced Artificial Intelligence Software by Topaz Labs to denoise, deinterlace, restore, and upscale, and ultimately enhance our video footage to a high resolution before we upload them. Before we can have the best looking footage on these platforms, there's a few things that we have to do. So let's jump into Topaz Labs and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So once you open up Video Enhance AI, uh, the only thing that will look different is this will say actually import and you can just drag and drop your clips here. These are the six clips we're gonna be talking about or you can go to import here or control command shift plus O to actually import your footage. We're gonna go into preferences though because there's one really important hurdle that we need to get through before we can even start processing anything. And that is the pr what processor you're gonna be working with. Now I use a gaming computer, so I have mine set to the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. When you first uh, upload it or open it, it's gonna say CPU or all GPUs, internal UHD graphics. Make sure you choose your graphics card. And this is the same thing if you haven't done this, um, your uh, whatever editing software for using Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, make sure it's set to this because you'll get much better, much faster rendering times. Once that is set, uh, I usually have my max AI processor memory usage all the way up and this works fast enough for me, but if your computer's slow, you can reduce machine load and then your output directory. I have mine same as source directory just because I make sure that everything is where it needs to be before I even start editing. File management is super important, but if you wanna put it someplace different into a different folder, then you can just go custom here and put it to wherever you want. Now it's time for the meat and potatoes. How do we get our footage to go from pixelated, lo looking low quality, not at its best, to that fine, crisp, better than our eyes can see type of, vi uh, type of videos? When you first input your footage, it's gonna pop in at about 100% like this, and you can even see how low quality this is, how noisy it is. So but you can change it to zoom to fit, so you can see everything in there. Your view. This will change in a second, but I usually have it on single view or split view so that once it does its magic, you can actually use the slider to see the before and after. For this video though, let's keep it on 100, position it to what we wanna see, and then we're gonna go into our suggested tab. So with the AI model, you want suggested, and Topaz Labs will actually uh, look at the video footage and figure out what the video quality is, the video type, what the artifact type is, and then the recommendation uh, to fix it. And then you can actually change your output size if you want to go from uh, SD to HD to 4K. If you do choose 4K, it'll actually change uh, the crop for you. So if, let's go back to view, single view, and it'll show you a border if it actually decides to crop your footage. But I'm gonna set it to what I use 99.9% .9 of the time, and these are the results that you'll see uh, here in a second that you'll, I'm sure, be impressed with. Now, I usually do video quality anywhere between medium and low. I say this one is low, because if we zoom into 100%, we could see it's not incredibly sharp. And if you click low here, it'll actually give you uh, a little preview of what it looks like. You can click medium and it'll do the same thing. So we're gonna do low, we're gonna do progressive and artifact type. I'm gonna do high compression. Now, if you don't trust what the program chooses for you, you can click this little compare and it'll actually choose the three uh, best suggested types to render your footage in. So we'll do that and I'll show you guys what that looks like real quick. I have it set to 30 frames. We'll do preview. And you can see it rendering. And now you can see why it's choosing the low quality one. It is just way sharper and that is huge. And it's gonna go through this process of rendering each individual one. And then of course you can choose which one is the best. So right now I do like the low quality version, but 
Uh, let's go ahead and see what they render out to, and then we'll choose our option then. I actually like the strong dehalo one, so we're gonna close this. We're gonna choose strong dehalo, and then once it's all done, you just hit start processing, and it'll start processing everything. You can batch process, so I could go through and work on each of these different video files, and then once I'm done, you could do select them all and process them all at the same time. For time's sake, I'm just gonna go through and show you what they look like once they're rendered in the program using the slider, except for the 24 frames to 60 frames videos. So after rendering it, this is the original, and you can see how much it has cleaned it up. Like that is a huge difference, and that just looks so much more clear. This is just absolutely stunning, and that is why I use this on all of my videos. So let's now go ahead and check how it works with a low light. So again, I'm just gonna do, choose the suggested ones. This I will change to high compression again, and then we'll do strong dehalo, and then we'll do compare, and we'll do split view, and we'll preview this, this one. So this was shot at about 4,000 ISO, about a half hour after sun, the sun went down. So now you can see how well it cleans something up in low light. So if you look here, you can see all the noise, everything like that. Let's zoom to 200% and just how much it cleans all that up. Now this shot is slightly out of focus and as the fox actually walks this way, it'll turn and I focus on its face. That's why it doesn't look the greatest, but I mean, that's 200%. No one's gonna be that close. It'll look more like this on your phone. And if I wanted to, I could come here, put an in point, put an out point, and I could preview that. So again, this is the original, and that's it cleaned up. So much more detail in the fur, in the face, much cleaner. So this video here was shot at 24 frames per second. Now if you shot something at 24 frames per second and you wanted to slow it down, you would go to all models, choose one of these chronos fast, it doesn't really matter. It'll change your video artifact type. You'll now notice that model parameters pops up slow motion 100% and you can change your output frame per second from 24 frames and I'm gonna change it to 59 frames. Now once you uh, go through and process this. I'm not actually gonna process this or change anything, so I'm gonna hit cancel because I'm gonna show you guys in this phone shot because I think that did a great job and he's just sitting here chewing, so it's not like that big of a deal. You're not gonna notice a huge difference. Now, if you don't have a professional camera and your only camera is your phone, that's not a problem. Phones nowadays shoot gorgeous video. Just make sure it's set to 4K instead of 1080p or whatever you have it set at or whatever the default setting is, change it to 4K footage. Uh, 4K 30 frames per second is great. I shot this video here at 24 frames per second and we're gonna change uh, my musky shot to 60 frames per second and I'll show you how good of a job it does with interlacing, not interlacing with interpreting footage. So this little owl shot here was shot at 24 frames a second and we're just gonna do this how we would normally. So we're gonna go suggested, strong dehalo, high compression, and we'll do preview. View, we'll do split view, and we'll zoom into 100%. So you can really see the detail in the owl's face here. It just sharpens everything up, cleans it up really nice. So you can go from having your iPhone footage looking like it, a little bit pixelated, a little bit blurry, and really making it pop out. And that's the goal that we want here. Now for our muskie. So this was shot at 24 frames per second. And we're gonna, go, I already went ahead and converted it to 60 frames. Again, I just went to Kronos fast, left at Artemis low, and changed my output. So here you have the phone footage shot at 24 frames per second of the muskie. And you can see it's pretty fast paced. I'm just moving from side to side, 
trying to get a good shot, keeping my focus on the muskie's face. Now let's see what it looks like after I ran it through Topaz Video Enhance AI software and slowed it down to 60 frames per second. Now I took two different shots. The one on the right was shot at 60 frames per second with the phone converted to 24 frames per second to slow it down. The one on the left was 24 frames per second converted to 60 frames per second and then converted back to 24 frames per second to slow it down. And you can see they both look great. Now there's a few ways that you can get this footage from your computer to your phone. If you are a Mac user, you can of course airdrop it. It won't lose any detail, it won't compress it. Whatever you do, don't text it or email it, which I don't know how you would do that if you have a PC, have a, at least texting, but don't email it because it will compress it. I use Dropbox, but you can also use Google Drive and just upload it there and then download it on your phone. And then that way you won't lose any compression whatsoever. Okay, so our footage has been rendered, exported, we've uploaded it to Dropbox, we've airdropped it, it's in Google Drive. Now we download it on our phones. Now that it's downloaded on our phones, let's go ahead and upload it. But we need to make sure that our settings for either Reels or TikTok are set appropriately to actually display high quality footage. Even on, uh, I was gonna say YouTube Shorts, but I think YouTube Shorts is actually pretty good. Uh, they're usually pixelated at first, but I've noticed after a day or two, once it's processed, they'll be in HD. So on Instagram, you're gonna hit your three little bars. You're gonna go to settings, and then you're gonna go to account, data usage, and you wanna make sure high quality uploads is turned on. With that turned on, you can now go ahead and post your reel. For TikTok, once you open up TikTok, go ahead and click upload. Again, choose your video. Once your video has been chosen, Click next, more options, allow high quality uploads. And now do your descriptions, tags, whatever you want, and now you're ready to post. And they should come through high quality. Just let it play through, make sure that it looks good before you publish it, and you shouldn't have any issues and you're gonna have the best looking footage on those, on Instagram Reels and on TikTok. Now that you know how to use artificial intelligence software to have the most supreme looking video footage on Reels and TikTok, Go watch this video next on how to get the most crisp photos you possibly can.